Hello, this is part five, or actually part 5A, of my Git and GitHub tutorial series. I'm taking a break in this particular video of focusing on Git concepts through the use of the GitHub website to talk about something called uh, terminal and shell commands and terminal prompt and Unix and that sort of thing. So why am I talking about this? So the goal of this video series, now that we've covered basic Git and GitHub concepts, is for you to work locally on your laptop to, to, to work with Git offline, not through the GitHub website. And that's going to be very useful for a variety of reasons that you will see as I get through the, these various tutorials. Now, here's the thing. How do you do that? I am using the Mac computer system, <laughs> operating system, you know, snow, tiger, leopard, something or other. <laughs> I'm making the same joke I made 10 minutes ago, but you don't know that I'm doing that, and I shouldn't have done that. But I did it anyway, and it was better the first time. But i got to keep going. Um, so I'm using this, uh, uh, <laughs> someone will edit that out. I'm using this Mac, uh, Apple operating system. And so I could download software that allows me to run Git through a visual interface. But the way that I work with Git is by typing in Git commands to a terminal prompt. And this, if I can bring this up, is what a terminal prompt looks like. And this is what a command looks like. Uh, draw a circle. Of course, that's not a valid command. If I hit enter, it's going to say bash draw command not found. So what is this bash? What is this terminal? This is actually emulating it. This is, the types of commands I'm typing in here are the same commands I would type to a Unix operating system. So this is Mac OS ZYX. You might be using Windows. Um, Unix is another operating system that is you entirely interface with through the command line. Um, so if you want to do the stuff that I'm going to show you in this video on the Mac, you want to open up Terminal. If you're opening up Terminal for the very first time, that's very exciting. You can find it by go just even just going in and searching for Terminal. And you can see there it is. But it is in application slash utilities as well. If you were on Windows, I would suggest that you download something called Git Bash, which um, I'll, I'll include a link to downloading that in this video's description. Uh, you can actually use, there are various shell prompts in Windows, and I believe that Unix shells are coming to Windows natively, perhaps in the future, or by the time you're watching this video, maybe they're already there. But um, a, a Git bash I know will work if you're following along the stuff that I'm doing in this particular video. Okay, so what I need to show you now are what are the basic commands that you might want to type here. Maybe uh, there's a command called help. There is. So you can see that there's lots of things you could just come up with, type something, see what happens. and this is a huge time. I could make like 100 videos probably about things you can do with <laughs> Unix command prompt. One that I'm going to show you right now is you can type clear. And it just clears you right back up to the top, which is nice to sort of clear what's been on your screen previously. But I'm going to make a list over here. The main thing that you want to do, learn before you go on to the next video, and again, if you've already, if you know about Unix shell commands, you just skip ahead to the next video, is working with, um, working with your file system. So the main way to work with your file system is actually one single command called cd change directory, just like you might double click on a folder through the interface. CD is like changing the directory that your, your command line prompt is currently actively associated with. Um, if There is also the command which I use a lot called PWD, print working directory. And then there is also the command LS, which lists list the contents of the current working directory. So these are essentially the main ones that you want to use. We saw clear. I'll probably, as I start, Doing stuff by accident, use a few other commands. But let's just get comfortable with these basic commands before we move on to executing all the git commands uh, in terminal as well. OK, so I'm coming back over here. <laughs> and now I'm going to just start by typing in my first command. My first command is going to be pwd. There it goes. Oh, whoa, <laughs> I'm in a weird place. Ah, clear. I'm going to do cd dot dot clear. So pretend that didn't happen. I forgot I was demonstrating something earlier. But you might have you might have gotten a little bit of a taste there. But I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to correct that. I'm going to just scratch that. Okay, <laughs> edit that out. It won't be edited out probably. But um, I'm going to type pwd pwd. Look here I am in users processing. So this is the default directory that terminal just sort of set me in originally. I, I can actually open this directory directly in the finder by saying open dot, open the dot being like this current directory, open being opening. So if I wanted to open a file, I could actually put the file name in here, but I want to just open this directory. And you can see now in the finder window, where what's, what, are, what are the directories here? Applications, desktop, documents, downloads. If I were to now type ls, list, 
you can see, look, it's listing all of those here in terminal prompt. So this is just another interface to your file system, the same way the Finder on the Mac and the, the Explorer on Windows is. So let's say I want to like put some stuff on, work with some files on my desktop. I would type CD desktop, and I'm going to misspell it with two Ps, and it should say no such file or directory exists. If I spell it correctly, I should be there. Now, I didn't get any message, but I could say PWD, and you can see now I have changed to the desktop. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick. Now, first of all, let's say I want to go back a directory. Dot, dot will get me back a directory. So if I do cd dot, dot, now I'm up one directory, and I can see that for sure, user slash processing. Now, let's say I want to change the desktop, but I don't really feel like typing so much. If I type cd des, I'm going to hit a magical key now. Tab is a magical key in the command line. And what it's going to do, it's going to fill in the rest of that. Now, how did it know? that I intended to type desktop. Well, there's only so many things. There's only so many options. There's only one that starts with DE desktop. So tab is a way of auto-filling in a file name. And I'm going to use that a lot as I do all sorts of stuff in Git, hitting tab to like auto-fill in. That's a quick way of, do, of doing things. So now I'm on the desktop again. Another trick is the up arrow. Up and down arrow allows you to browse through previous commands. So you can see here I'm hitting the up arrow. So if I wanted to find like a command like this, I can just find it again, hit enter, and now I opened my desktop. And you can see these are the various files that I have on my desktop. Uh, and you can see I actually have, this is you know, foreshadowing. This is a narrative device called foreshadowing. <laughs> I have this rainbow poem folder, which is actually my Git repository that I downloaded from GitHub, which I'll get to in the next video more about that. OK, I'm trying to think, ah, here's something else that you really want to do. So let's say you want to activate a current directory in terminal that is somewhere deep embedded in your computer. So I'm going to go, um, we're going to go back to the finder and I'm going to go to uh, documents and I'm going to find data APIs, JSON3. So this is like some old example that I made in some previous video tutorial. Let's say I wanted terminal to point to that directory. Well, it's slash documents, slash data underscore APIs. So a lot to remember. So something that I can do is I can type CD space and now I can just take this folder and drag it into the terminal window and let go. And you can see it's going to auto fill in the path. So I can now hit enter. I can say PWD. I can say LS. And I can see that. Now, one thing I'll show you about LS that sometimes I need is I can also do LS dash all. So Unix commands can be often modified with arguments. This is one argument dash all, which will give me more information about those files. And you can see it's giving me information about, this is like file permissions, the date, the size, which user has control over this file, all that sort of stuff. So you know, in this case, hidden files will show up this way. That's not something you're going to need all the time, but it's particularly can be rather useful. So this is the basics. This is all I really need to do, because ultimately, if I want to execute git commands, um, with a particular set of files. I just need my terminal to be in that directory. So for example, if the directory, as I know, it will be, in the, and this is kind of going into the next video, is this rainbow poem folder on the desktop, I will just want to type cd, drag it over, hit enter, type pwd to confirm, and now you'll see I am now ready to execute git commands on the git repository that is in this rainbow poem folder. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video about basic Unix stuff that you need for doing Git and commands via the locally on your computer. And in the next video, I'm going to move on to actually showing you those Git commands and how they differ and how you work with GitHub and all the stuff that I'm going to get to. Okay, thanks again.